Hey guys, it's Alexis, Sophie Leather. All right, in this video, I'm gonna do something completely different. It is gonna be, I'm just gonna start building a radio strap. All right, and I'm gonna do it unedited. All right, I'm gonna start like I'm walking in the shop, completely unedited. I'm not gonna do it all in one video. I think that'll be too long. I think it's a total of two to three hours, but uh, we'll do it in chunks. So every time I come in here and start working on a project, I'll just pick up where I left off. I wanna keep this video between 20 and 30 minutes. So I'm gonna work for 30 minutes, film all of it, leave it raw, unedited, in there, and maybe I'll give some commentary. It's not for everyone. It's probably not gonna do that well, this video, but it's not a big deal. I kinda of wanna show you my workflow. Maybe somebody will get something out of it. All right, without further ado, I'm going to set this up, and real quick, in the description below, there's gonna be links to a lot of um, tips and tricks, uh, as well as some templates. You guys know that people that have been on my channel for a long time. But for those new people, there's gonna be a lot of resources for you down in the description. Also, if you don't mind, after you watch the video, let me know in the comments below if this is a good idea or a bad idea or if it's too drawn out, whatever. I'm gonna put it up anyway, but I just like to get some feedback. Anyways, God bless you, enjoy the video, bye. All right, hopefully this is a good angle. You guys let me know below if this is gonna be a good angle or not. Um, but yeah, here we go, the clock starts now. I'm gonna give it a good 15 minutes. I'll try to talk as much as possible. What I'm building is a radial strap and customer wanted Buck Brown. This is uh, Wicked and Craig Buck Brown. And I'm gonna be using uh, Wicked and Craig backing material for the back. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna talk a lot or not. I, I have no idea. But I'm gonna reference my website where I have the order, okay? And uh, I'm not gonna show you because I don't wanna give you this guy's information, but he wanted buck brown and the size, he says unsure, I'll contact you. So I'll give him a buzz real quick. Um, unsure, adjustable, unsure, stitch color black, hardware. I'm not gonna worry about the hardware or the stitch color just yet because what I wanna do is just get it ready for glue. So I'm just gonna glue it, cut all the pieces to size and just glue that and get it glued for our next video. So let me contact him real quick and I'll get all my tools ready to go. I should have did this before, but if he doesn't contact me, I'll make him the original size, the standard size of 60 inches. Let me, uh, and I would say that, that, uh, sorry. What just happened? 60 inch. I'm texting him right now, 60 inch uh, custom uh, adjustable would be a perfect fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and make an executive decision here and I'm gonna make it a 60 inch simply because, let me get my scale. Simply because since it's adjustable, if it's too short, I can easily just make them an adjustable piece a little longer. The buckle end piece, I could just make that a little longer if it's really too short. But I'm gonna tell you right now, 99.9% .9 of the orders I get are anywhere between 59 inches and 62 inches. So, and the adjustable is actually gives you, if I make it 60, I have three inches to play with. So it can go all the way up to 63 or all the way down to 57. So that's something to keep in mind is that uh, if you follow my templates and my patterns, if you don't know the size, the standard would be 60 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the process. I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. Is my head in the way? I have no idea. I've been doing this so long, I know this by memory. I don't like using all those smaller fractions. I like the bigger, bigger ones. I don't, I don't deal with anything less than a quarter inch really, so I like to deal with the uh, other side. Okay, so this is where I need to do a little math. If I want the total size to be 60, right? I gotta subtract eight inches because the buckle piece is going to be eight inches total. So 
This is a main strap. I'm gonna make this eight inches short because I'm gonna gain the eight when I do the buckle. So three, so 60 minus eight would be 52. This will be 52 right here. And then I'm gonna go three up and three down. Of course, let me get this out of the way. No matter how many times I clean my table, after I use it one time, it becomes a hot mess. And it's hard for me to actually work um, with a messy table. It freaks me out a little bit, so I have to tidy up after every time. All right, now I wanna find the middle of the strap. I know the finish size is gonna be 60 inches. So I wanna find right at the middle, which is 30, right here. And I wanna come down four inches because that's where the vertical lapel mic is gonna sit. The vertical lapel mic is gonna be right there. And then down from here, I go another six inches or so for the belt, for the uh, cord keeper. I do, an, I do an extra cord keeper up here. So right now I'm marked up with everything. That's marked up, I'm gonna cut it out. And that's all we're gonna do. I'm not gonna work on anything else. I'm just gonna get the finished size on this, stamp what he wants on there, his name, glue it, and then that'll be, that'll be it for this order. But I wanna make sure that he didn't add anything else. Yep, nothing special. And he wants a simple, clean stamp. He don't want anything special, so no paint. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. Or punch this out. Now you guys probably know this by now, but uh, I don't freehand cut a lot of things. I like to use tools like this, you know? If it'll wanna focus. Does it wanna focus? Yeah. There you go. And you throw this over your shoulder and you try to get in the garbage can. And then you miss every time, but you edit it in like you actually made it so people think you're cool. But then you're a really honest person, so you just let everybody know that you actually missed. So this is the leftover. I'm gonna use that for the buckle end and any other pieces that I could make. So I'm not gonna lose that. We're not punching anymore for today. I still gotta make dinner. And I still got some other work I have to do on the computer for real estate. Oh yeah, you guys gotta check me out right here in this link. I, I can't do it upside down. I think it's over here. I'm gonna start posting a lot there. It's a little shameless plug, but you know, I gotta advertise. All right, so this is good. Now what I typically do now is I go ahead and stamp what he wants on there, okay? And on the back of this bad boy, this is where I keep the notes right in front of me because I do not want to misspell his name, even though he's a brother that works for us. Um, and I shouldn't have memorized his name because I've known him for about 15 years. But you know how it is. I go off of what he wrote in here because I do not want to mess it up. This way I can refer him to, to tell him, to, I can refer him to um, the note. You know, if, it, if it's wrong, then I say, hey buddy, this is, what you, uh, this is where you put down the notes. And then I'm, a, I'm still a nice guy and then I'll still redo it. I'm talking a lot. I only had two cups of coffee too. I don't know what's going on. I'm not editing this out. You guys get to see me for who I am. Um, chatty catty a little bit. But what I like to do is, this is Arbor Freight. Uh, Harbor Freight or any kind of cheap um, press. An Arbor Press. And I know that these tools I know that these tools, these stamps, come with this uh, little thing here that you hit with a mallet and stamp it. I don't like doing that. I cheat. $40 tool gets it done perfect every time. So I don't mess around. Well, you're gonna obviously see who this is because I'm stamping his name out. So we'll just go ahead and uh, Travis Fulton. So if we look at the way this strap is laid out, This is the front. You see the holes where I'm marking where the adjustment holes where it's gonna go. And that's gonna be the, this is gonna be the back. So I'm stamping his name on the back and I wanna make sure I get this right. So I'm gonna lay it out to see the spacing. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put his name 
as much as I can, as long as the letters don't duplicate. And uh, I don't have to reuse the same stamp. Now I'm, I'm confirming that. T R A V I S. T R A V I S. All right, Fulton. This would be funny if I actually could use. I don't have to double up. No, I did. Full, full ton. O N. Close though. Wow. All right, so this is how it's gonna fit. So I want to make sure that if I start where I normally do, which is 16 inches from the back, from the buckle, I'm not from the buckle, from the trigger snap on the back here. I always start 16 inches up. This way it keeps it uniform. So that'll be right here, 24, will that fit? 16 inches. Will this fit right here? It will fit if I start like I normally do. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this like I normally do, just to make sure that it all fits, it does. So we're gonna go ahead and stamp this. And let me show you, I'm gonna move it over so you can see how I actually do it. Ten. So what I do is I put this device right on my scale here at 10 inches or whatever, put this back piece this is where the trigger snap goes. I put that at 16 inches out. So right here is gonna be 26. And I usually start my first letter here. That's why I wanted to make sure that that 16 inches was enough room for his name in which it is. That makes sense. This way it looks clean, you know what I mean? This way it looks clean. It's never gonna be exactly, but I like to leave that there and let me tell you what I do here. Start the first one. I hold the back because you don't want it to lift up on you. Push down kind of good. Check it, leave that stamp in there. Move on to the next letter. I check every time. Because you can't unstamp this. If you leave that other stamp in there, it's self-spacing. You just bump it up right there. Uh, bump it up to it and it'll self-space and look really clean. Uh, this T is done, that's there, I'll leave that in place. I'll move on to the next letter. I'll leave that in there. And the way I'm centering this is eyeballing it, all right? This is big enough that you could do that. If there's a lot more leather on the edges, then I would consider measuring or making a jig so that you're perfectly in the middle. But uh, you can eyeball this because it's so close. Now these are three quarter inch stamps. You can use a quarter, uh, one inch stamps. The problem with the problem with the one inch stamps is that it runs too far out to the edges and my stitch runs over them a little bit, so I, I, I stick with the one inch, uh, three quarter inch stamps. Now I needed that T, so I'm gonna put that over there. Let me double check. F-U-L-T-O-N, F-U-L-T-O-N. All right, so it's spelled correctly here. F-U-L-T-O-N. All right, now as far as the spacing in between the names, you can use an existing stamp. So I'm putting the S back on Travis, and I'm gonna use another arbitrary stamp just for the spacing so it's uniform. And I'm gonna start with my F for his last name. Now, what happens is now it's gonna be uniform, all right? The spacing is gonna look clean and uniform. A few. This is Buck Brown. I have a little system. I, I, I spell it out down here, and then anything that it's not used anymore, I throw it up to the t left. I think we're going to be done in about, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes.
And that's all fast. And look how clean this thing stamps. You know, and he doesn't want it painted, so I think that looks classy. That's gonna look sharp. That's done. Here's an important part of this process, is you wanna put this back in alphabetical order. Makes it a lot easier when you need it. Oh, I got one more stamp. My little uh, name thingy, my bob. That's the official leather name for it, name thingy, my bob. I always double check the orientation. Actually, you know what I do? I'm gonna start doing that last. This way I could kind of fit it right in between the stitch. That's what I'll do. S V O L M N O P Q R S T U N. Okay, we're moving. All right, that's done. I'll put my maker's mark stamp later on. After it's glued, another day. I want to shoot the gap there between the stitch a lot nicer and cleaner. Okay. So now I have this back piece. Hold on guys. This is unedited, real time, real talk. Mm. All right. And my wife just texted me. Hold on. Hold on, Ghost Rider. Whoa. All right, this is simple. Flip this over, put this on here, and I'm gonna mark it a little bit. Oh, okay. I'm gonna take a pen that's nowhere around, or a pencil, where's my pencils? I got it. This is the back side. I'm just gonna mark roughly, don't have to be perfect, where the strap is gonna sit on this backing piece. This backing piece is five ounces, and the main strap is nine ounces, okay? I go over this in my playlist or how to build a radio strap. So check out how to build a radio strap. Now, you can see it there. I have it marked, and that's really simply just to help me glue. Make sure I'm going over the edge when I'm gluing. And I'll, I'll pull it up to the camera here in a second to show you. I don't throw this little bit out because I can use that for a pair of suspenders. Uh, for that back piece on the suspenders. But you can barely see where I marked that. So that's just telling me uh, to make sure I get the glue over that line, okay? There's a couple tools I use, and now I'm gonna glue and then the video's over. It's a couple of tools that I use for the gluing process. This little roller job, bone file, bone folder, I think, and a cobbler's mallet thing for the edges and stuff. Um, and then as well as this cork board. I go over this on a video on how to glue. It's in my leather playlist video. But I, I use this cork board so I don't get any glue on my surface. This is my working surface. I wanna keep this as clean as possible. Oh, this is gonna get into my tripod over there. But uh, yeah, I think we're good. I'm gonna flip this over. And a little tip when you're gluing, you see how these curls, you see how these edges curl up? You wanna get that kind of flat. So when you're, when you're putting it on there, it's a little easier. Same thing on the, on the end over here. See how this curls up? I get that down nice and flat. This way, <clears throat> when you're applying it to the backing material, it's a little easier. And that's it. Now we're gonna glue. I use contact cement, uh, weld wood contact cement. Uh, I'm running low. I think I'm running low. I have a whole can over there, but weld wood contact cement. That's it. I'll, I'll leave it over here. 
weld wood contacts in it. And I'm literally going to put this on the back. So a good way of thinking of this is you want to glue the main body to the back piece versus the other way around. And I, I go a little overkill because I want to make sure all the edges are covered. You don't want this to peel off. So what I do is that back piece, you notice this strap is one and a half inches. The back piece is two inches wide. It's a little wider. And what I do is I put the glue way past that line on the back piece, that line that I uh, scribed or scratched in with the pencil. This way I know for sure, it gives me a little wiggle room and I know that all the edges are gonna be covered. And then once it's dry, I'll trim it off. Make sense? Should I keep talking while I do this or should I just be quiet? I don't know what people want to see, but I'm just going to do what I do. Maybe somebody would appreciate the talking. Who knows? Now, uh, it's inevitable. You're going to get a little glue on the edges, but when we're done, when it's basically time to assemble and burnish and bevel, we'll sand all that glue off and clean up the edges. Whew, guys, it's getting hot. I might have to put the fan on, 100%. And you'll see by the time I'm done gluing this back piece, it's almost, it'll be almost time to, to get it on there. So that's that. Hold on, I got a text. Can't see that right now. Now it's time for the back piece. And I'm gonna go way over the line here, almost out to the edge of this two inch back piece. <clears throat> this is why I scribed that line. This way I know I'm safe. And I go over that line, okay? Now what that does is two things. Number one, it guarantees that you're, you're gluing the whole surface, right? And number two, it guarantees you don't have to be perfect. Imagine having a one and a half inch back piece and a one and a half inch strap and you have to marry those two together. That'll be a little bit hard, all right? I mean, I'm probably gonna lose a dollar maybe on leather by using a two inch piece and shaving off quarter inch on each side, but you know how much time I'm gonna save and not having to worry about making sure it's exactly dead nuts or square. So it's just a lot easier. It's, it's worth, it's worth, to me it's worth it. I don't, I don't necessarily worry about um, recouping my cost as much as I'm recouping my time because time is money. So I like to get as much done as efficient without cutting corners Right? If it means I gotta eat a little bit of money, then I'll eat a little bit of money, but the end result's gonna be clean, professional, and uh, people will come back for more, and wish they have. You know? You get what you pay for. And I don't cut corners, my friend. I don't. Of course, you're gonna see me cutting corners in this video, and then I gotta eat crow, but you know what I mean, in general. All right, I'm gonna, cu I'm gonna cut the fan on. I'm gonna put this away. When you're done with the glue pot, I always put a little glue on the edges like that. That's why you saw me having a hard time undoing it. That kind of creates a seal. And uh, that glue's been in there for maybe two months and it's, it hasn't thickened up to the point where it's unusable. It's actually still usable. So this is a little tip. Let me put the fan on real quick. And I apologize ahead of time for the loud noise. Whew, I might leave that fan on for the rest of the video too. So basically what we're doing now, what I want to explain to you is, hold on, let me make sure I'm catching, yeah, I am getting audio. What I want to make sure is this is not ready to glue yet because it's visibly shiny. You can see that it's still wet. You want to wait till it's tacky where it's almost no visible shine and that's when it's appropriate to put it on. And I'm telling you right now, with that fan on, probably like the next two minutes. So in the meantime, we're just going to sit here and we're going to watch Literally, we're gonna watch glue dry. Because I'm gonna hold true to uh, no editing. You're gonna hear me drink water and hear my throat noises.
You're welcome. I did that for you. And oh, you know what? Let me check my uh, video real quick here. Uh, let me show you this video. This is my son. <laughs> he's getting a procedure in his eye where he's, um, it's a new procedure where they put this suction cup on your eye and it, cr it corrects your eye. You gotta sleep with it all night long and it lasts for a day or two instead of wearing glasses. So this is a video my wife just sent me. <laughs> That's so cute. All right, perfect timing. I wasted your time for two minutes, now it's time. Now this is important. I'm gonna see if I can move this out a little bit so you can see how I do this. Can you see that? Yeah, right? There's a technique. You gotta kinda grab it. You can't really see, I wish you could, but. You gotta grab it. I don't know if you see my right arm. You can't. But you start off right here. This is where it's crucial why you have that overlap on those lines. So the line's gonna help you guide it on there, as well as, so you could fudge this a little bit as you're going down, right? You see? I'll give it a good little, like that. You got a whistle when you do it. Pull this off, now I have a clean table. Put this back down here. Now we're gonna flip this bad boy. From the middle out, just in case there's bubbles, you don't wanna go this way because you don't wanna roll the bubble into the middle of the strap. Just in case there is a bubble, middle out. Roller job. A good hard pass on the roller. And then the most important thing that people forget to do, you gotta run this along the edge. All right, run this, is it? Yeah, run this bad boy along the edge. Let me show you. And I'll show you, the, let me show you the difference there. See, that's me passing it and without passing it. See, without. And I always go point out. I never do this because you're gonna end up scratching. That point's gonna get into the leather. So that pointy, always pointing outside the leather. Same thing around the corners and then this way See, I'm, I'm still keeping that point away from the leather because if you do this, it's going to want to come up and, and, and uh, mark your leather and scratch it. This is really sealing that edge there. And then, me, uh, then I'm going to tap it, the edges lightly. I don't want to really completely deform the edges but I wanna make sure this might be overkill. I might be actually doing nothing whatsoever. And then the edges here, I give that a good hit on the flat side. I just wanna make sure the edges are good to go. And that's it. Now, in the spirit of no editing, I'm gonna go ahead and just change the camera uh, angle and do a little outro for you guys real quick. Is this it? Is this good? I don't know, can you see me? Let's sit down here. Is this bad? All right, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below if uh, you guys like these kind of videos. God bless you guys. Have a good day, night, evening, whatever. Next video, we're going to um, continue the process. So I'm not gonna touch this. The next time I touch this, I'll film another video like this. If you guys like it, if you don't like it, then I won't film it again. Bye.